Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on wherever you're dialing in from in the world. Um, and welcome to our third session of the day um, here on MBA Spotlight at GMAT Club. So I'm Linda, I'm one of the moderators here at GMAT Club. Uh, I'm super excited to be hosting Duke Fuqua. Um, and we've got Morgan and Sherry uh, coming to share with you guys the intricacies of the MBA program offered at Fuqua and what makes them stand out and why you should definitely consider applying for them in the next MBA application cycle. Um, so a few things that I want to mention before I hand over are, uh, one, I'm going to be shameless here. Please like this video and subscribe to GMAT Club's channel so that we can continue to offer you guys useful advice and be a support system as you meander through the MBA application process for this year and any consecutive years that you're looking to apply later on down the line. Um, and number two, for any questions that you've got throughout the presentation, um, please post them in the chat box to the right hand of the screen. Um, and then after Morgan and Cherie have finished the presentation, we'll go into a Q&A session where we're going to answer the questions with a bit more detail. Um, and then if there's nothing that we can get to during the Q&A session, please feel free to contact either Morgan and Sherry uh, afterwards. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over. Uh, and once again, thank you both Morgan and Sherry for joining us today to talk more about the program at Fuqua. Thank you so much, Linda. It's been it's a pleasure. I'm so excited to be able to join everyone here at the MBA Spotlight. I'm Sherry Hubert. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. I've been with the institution for about four years, spent most of my career in the kind of corporate sector, the nonprofit, the public sector. I also have my MBA and I am a true evangelist for this degree and the value that it can bring to you. So I am so excited to be joined by uh, my colleague, Morgan Griffin. I'll let her introduce herself. I'll come back and join Morgan for the live Q&A, but I'll turn it over to her now to introduce herself and to go through our information session presentation. But again, thanks so much for joining. I'm so glad you guys are starting this journey. Morgan? Thank you, Mary, so much. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Morgan Griffin. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here at Duke's Fuqua School of Business. And I had the pleasure of sitting on the Admissions Committee with Sherry. I work primarily with applicants in India, as well as the Mid-Atlantic region of the United States. So for anyone joining us uh, from those regions, happy to help answer any questions you have. Um, but we'll kind of go into the presentation, because I know that's why you're joining us. You want to learn a little bit more about our school. Um, so kind of the way uh, things will go for this presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of our program, uh, kind of break down how it's structured, um, also give you an insight into the student experience, focusing on experiential learning opportunities, as well as some of the career resources that are available to our stu students, both during and even after their MBA journey here at FUPA. We'll then touch on the admissions process, probably the part of the presentation that you all are most eager to learn about. And then I'll also share ways of how you can stay connected with um, me, Sherry, and my other colleagues in the admissions office as well. So to kick off the program overview, um, so we do have, um, we have a general management MBA. We also have an MBA field of study that's included in the MBA program as well. But this is a two-year degree, um, very team-focused learning. Um, it's a business core curriculum with 100 plus electives. So what this really means is while you get a general management MBA, you are also able to customize your MBA. So if you're interested in finance, we have a track for that uh, and a concentration. We have concentrations in energy, um, the STEM field of study as well. So we have 16 concentrations total, the one MSTEM track and then two certificate programs as well. In addition, we do have five dual degree programs as well. Um, as mentioned, we have a dedicated career resources. So this is your coaching staff for your career search, your internship search. Um, they're also going to be there to work through different workshops with you, whether it's building your resume, uh, preparing for interviews. Um, and they're also in charge of bringing companies um, to recruit our students and making you aware of other recruitment opportunities if they're not specifically coming to Fuqua to recruit. Uh, in addition to the student experience, we also have 50 plus student clubs 
that are managed by our MBA association. And I'll get that to that in a minute. Um, but I do want to talk about this MSTEM track. It's really popular with our students. Um, so again, this is included in the MBA program. And what it is, is you would take your general, all your classes that are required, and then you would take certain electives. Um, and this really gives you breadth across disciplines and an advantage throughout your career um, when looking at data analytics, business marketing, and those types of things. Um, what's really attractive about the MSTEM track is that uh, typically for international students, post MBA, they get one year of work authorization, also known as OPT. If they complete this track within Fuqua and then get a STEM designated career, which is dictated by a company, uh, instead of a one year work authorization, they get a total of three years of work authorization. So really appealing to our international students. Uh, having worked with a lot of students that like, went into the tech industry, for example, some of them have uh, been working at various companies um, all across the tech sector as well. So really appealing to them. So what does our class look like? I get this question a lot. Uh, how many uh, people are like me? So our class size is typically 408, but that ranges can go all the way. We've seen up at 450 students. So this is just what last year's class that came in and started last fall looked like. So keep that in mind. Uh, average age, 29. Average years of work experience is 5.6. We do feel that uh, work experience is helpful to our students. It helps them to contribute to the overall classroom discussions and have that insight as well. But um, one thing I will note when looking at these numbers, if, if you're not fitting into these specific categories, don't worry, this is just the average. So um, there are people with less years of work experience, more years of work experience that were admitted. Um, we are 46% of our class is women and 38% of them are international students as well. And 23% are underrepresented minorities as well. And I know probably for a lot of you, your eyes darted straight down to the bottom of your screen uh, to look at what that GMAT range is. So again, Keep this in mind, this was the, the middle 80% of our class average, but uh, we will go into kind of test scores uh, a little bit later here uh, in this presentation, but don't focus on uh, those three digit numbers. Um, this is just to give you a range of kind of what do things look like for our class that just came to FUPA. So the student experience. Um, the thing that we get asked a lot is what differentiates uh, Fuqua from another school? And I would say it's truly um, our culture. So these are our four values that we believe in. We, we live and breathe this every day, all the way from staff, faculty, to our students. So at Fuqua, we believe in diversity of people. When we are uh, bringing students into the classroom, uh, we want people that come from not only different countries, but experiences, work experiences, extracurricular, different cultures, backgrounds. We believe that diversity really enriches uh, the MBA experience, whether it's in the classroom or even with managing the different clubs and activities that ha happen as part of the MBA experience. Um, so diversity of experience, as I just mentioned, some we have people who are uh, have an engineering background. We have people that come from a marketing background. We have people that come from a liberal arts background, people that have managed companies, people that have done startups, people that have worked in corporate America, worked in healthcare, um, you name it. Uh, lots of different experiences and experiences in working um, on different teams or within different countries or cultures. Um, one of the most important things I believe too, and if you've ever heard of uh, or heard Dean Bolding talk, we believe in winning the right way. Um, and that means doing what's best for everybody involved. It's not always the bottom line. And more importantly, moving teams forward. So you'll hear a lot the phrase Team Fuqua mentioned by our students or alumni if you interact with them. And we really believe in working together in doing things for what's best, not always just what's the bottom line or the most money, but doing things for the right reason and working together as a team. Again, going back to drawing out the strength of uh, diversity of people that we're working with or experiences as well. So this is where that really comes together. And that's when you'll really hear uh, about Team Fugue. If you talk with our students, you'll hear them mention it a lot. And this is what that means. These are our core values that we believe in. And it's what we're looking for in applicants when they're applying to Fugue as well. 
So student experience, we have 50 plus clubs here at Fuqua. They range from leisure clubs to professional clubs and even um, diversity clubs as well. And these clubs are managed by our MBA association, also known as the MBAA. And what's nice about the MBAA as well as these clubs is these give our students hands-on managing experience. We put the student life experience in the hands of the students. So they get experience in managing clubs um, and getting that experience and leadership skills as well through managing those clubs. We also have FUQA partners. Um, this is what really helps to make the MBA experience um, great for people that might be coming with partners or spouses or even children. So FUQA partners is, I always say, it's like getting an MBA without having to do the homework. Um, it's the fun part of the MBA. So they can be involved in the MBA experience. We also know that for our students, um, they are going to be busy working late on classes, uh, recruiting, and we want their families and their partners and spouses to feel part of the MBA program. So we also call them section seven. Our students are divided into six sections, but then we have section seven that's for partners and spouses and families for them to be involved. So the Fuqua Partners Club, Bill, uh, schedule outings or gatherings or provide resources um, to families, especially for those that might be moving overseas or a long distance. Maybe it's their first time living in North Carolina or Durham, North Carolina. And so it's there to make them feel part of the MBA experience and, and provide them with that opportunity as well. Uh, we also have several research centers. So this is a great way for people and our students to dive deep into topics they're interested in. So we have EDGE, which is our energy uh, center. We also, also have HSM, which is our health sector management center. We also have CASE, which is for uh, social impact. And then we also have CEI, Entrepreneurship and Innovation, as well as COLE, which is our leadership center. Um, so these centers, they put on programming, conferences. They have Some of them have fellows, but really a way that if you're interested in any of those areas, you can really dive deep during your MBA experience and be involved in that as well. So experiential learning opportunities. So not only are you going to be in the classroom participating in clubs and activities, um, but we also have these other, uh, uh, um, excuse me, opportunities for you to learn more um, about something you're interested in. So we have real world consulting projects through the Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, um, which allows you to work on an actual project that has been brought forth by a company to Fuqua um, get some hands-on consulting experience. So great for people that if you are looking to pivot into consulting, this is a great opportunity to get your hands into what the consulting experience is like before deciding that's your career path. We also have Fuqua on board, which allows our students to serve on a local nonprofit here in the Durham, North Carolina community and learn what it's like to help lead a nonprofit and get that experience as well. We also have several global opportunities. So we have the Global Academic Travel Experience, also known as GATE, which allows students, if they're interested in doing business on a global scale, to study how business is done in a certain country or area of the world, and they'll take those classes. And then they have the opportunity to actually go to those locations and do company visits and kind of see how things are done kind of on the ground in person. We also do offer an exchange program that students can participate in as well. Entrepreneurial initiatives. Uh, this is a really big one that is popular as well. So program for entrepreneurs allows people that if you have an idea um, for a new business or a product that you can get that experience as well and help helping to put together that plan and pitching it. We also have the new ventures clinic and the startup challenge as well. So really popular for those who are interested in entrepreneurship post MBA. And we also have independent studies. So this is a chance if you know what you're interested in doesn't fall into one of these categories, you can work with a faculty member on a project of interest to you as well. So this, uh, I have heard this being popular with some of our alumni, they talk about how that was so impactful. So if what you're interested in doesn't fall into one of these categories, we do have that flexible option that you can work with a faculty member who might also have a, a expertise in that field to work with you on that as well.
So career resources, um, our career management center, they are a wonderful um, team here at Fuqua and they are essentially going to be your career coaches. So there we have different sector directors for different industries and so their expertise, they've either had jobs in those areas and they've helped to build those connections within those companies as well to know what they're looking for to help coach you. So we have a, a tech sector director, we have a finance sector director, a health sector uh, director as well. And so they're going to be there um, to help you, uh, you know, recruit for those, set up kind of your game plan, uh, so to say, for doing internships as well as um, to look for your career post MBA. They'll also be helping you with different workshops and resume reviews. So they're going to help you with what you can expect in an interview if you're going to interview at, say, a Land Lakes or an Amazon or a BCG, um, and also help with putting your resume together. This is going to be really key and something that even is now starting in the summertime before our students start getting them ready, um, getting that resume ready to go so they can hit the ground running when it comes to recruiting in the fall. And again, our Career Management Center, they bring companies to campus to do recruiting. And then they also, if those companies aren't coming to campus, they're also in touch with those companies or boutique firms to help you um, with knowing when to go to recruit for those as well. So here's a sense of who our top employers are. This was based off of the class that graduated last year. This is the employment data. We collect data um, three months out from graduation. So just keep that in mind as you see these next few slides. But again, top companies that um, recruited at Fuqua, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Deloitte, McKinsey, BCG, JP Morgan and Chase, uh, Bain, PwC. So all these companies, top employers, and I would say this list, we're usually seeing these companies year after year. This wasn't a one off. We're usually seeing the Googles, the Microsoft, the Amazon, the Apples, the BCGs um, as well. So that is pretty typical. No surprises there when we saw that data. As far as jobs by industry, so consulting tech and finance are probably our biggest uh, jobs by industry that our graduates uh, go into. And I would say technology has been increasing. No surprise there, um, a lot of tech jobs are booming, especially with that STEM designation now with Fuqua. Um, a lot of our students are going into that as well. But we also have healthcare in there as well, consumer goods, and then the other category as well. So as far as where our students are going, post MBA. Um, here's kind of a map and I'll say West Coast again has been growing, um, especially with the tech jobs. Uh, Northeast is usually pretty high up there. And then we do see a fair amount of students that stay in the South and Southwest as well. Um, and so that's kind of where our students go. I will note that 6% of our students go outside of the United States as well for employment immediately post MBA. So career stats, um, here's kind of just a quick look at um, some stats of our students. So this is three months post MBA, post graduation, 93% of our students had a job and had accepted it. The average base salary was $136,000 with an average signing bonus of $35,000. So the admissions process, the area that Sherry and I specialize in, uh, where you will work very closely um, if you plan on applying this year to Fuqua, and I hope you do, um, but this is where we specialize in. So here is kind of an overview of our application. Um, so you will see on the right-hand side, those are our application deadline dates. Um, what I will first highlight is our early action period. This is our first application deadline, and this is the binding decision round. So if you apply, you're saying you'll come to Fuqua if admitted. So if you know Fuqua is your top choice, if before this event or maybe after viewing this video, you say, you know what, I want to apply to Fuqua. I know this is the school that's right for me. That's the best round to apply in. And then we have our other rounds. And then we do ask that international students, we usually suggest they apply by round two. That just gives them ample time if they're admitted to get all the visa paperwork done. Um, so round two is probably your best if you're an international student. But if you're sitting here saying, you know, I, I'm not sure, I'm still in that research phase of business school, um, I'm looking at different schools and applying, that's fine. What I would suggest when it comes to deciding what round do you apply in is apply in the wrap as soon as your application is the strongest. 
If that's round one, that's great. If it's round two, that's great. You'll hear from the admissions team that we would much rather you take a few more weeks or months to put together a really strong application and apply in a round one or two than rushing to get it done for early action or round one because you think that's what we want to see. So uh, work on your application. It's a lot of time is spent on it. So apply as soon as you feel like your application is the strongest. Um, there's no round um, that is, I would say, this is the round you have to apply in. It's really based on where you are in the application process. So right now our team is reviewing uh, the application process. We will be uh, putting our application uh, live in early July. So be on the lookout for that or head on over to our website if you're viewing this later. But that's when our application will be live and we'll announce if there's any changes. Um, but as far as what components of your application, these components will always stay the same. Some things that might change might be word count or things like that on essay questions. That's where you'll want to pay attention. But as far as academics, we're looking at your undergraduate degree. Did you challenge yourself? How did you perform in your academic career? And then looking at the standardized test scores as well. FUQA accepts the GMAT, the GRE, or the executive assessment. We're also going to look at your work experience. This will be outlined in your one page resume. And I would say the best advice here with the resume, if you're taking notes right now, write this down. Uh, when we're reviewing your one page resume, we really want to see your accomplishments. We're not looking for a detailed list of what your daily job responsibilities are. We want to understand the impact you've made in your career, how you've managed people, projects, or budget. So really be thinking about impact when you're putting together your resume. I also tell, very often will tell applicants that I work with, typically the resume you use to probably get your job is going to need some refining when you're applying to business school. So go back through and really highlight what have you accomplished? Where is your impact been? And your resume will be the only component of the application that your interviewer will see if you're invited to interview or participate in our open interview season, um, which is where you can self-initiate your own interview. So I'll get into that a little bit later. We're also going to look at your leadership and involvement. So we want to really kind of when we're looking at your application, it's like peeling back an onion. And so here we really want to get to know you as a person. We're getting more into that. So with the leadership and involvement, we want to know what clubs, activities, organizations you've been involved in. Um, and this can also include things you're doing at work if it's not part of your job responsibility. So if you created a diversity and inclusion group at work and that's not part of your job responsibility, go ahead and list that. Um, you can also include activities that you've done in undergrad as well. Um, and so fill this out too. I often say this is the part of the application where some people say, I'm not involved in anything, I'm just gonna leave it blank. And certainly, you know, think through, I'm sure there's something you're involved in that you're proud of. And we just wanna see what you're passionate about, who you are as a person outside of work. And again, peeling back more of that onion, your essays. And that's really where um, we get to learn a lot more about you. So typically we do have a short answer question um, that asks about your reason for wanting to pursue an MBA. Where do you see yourself going post MBA? So pay attention to that. That's sometimes a question that can or cannot change each year, but the word count might change as well. The other essay is our iconic 25 things about you essay. And I'm probably smiling a lot more now that I said that because I love this essay. Um, it is the favorite part, my favorite part of the application. And it's a chance that we get to really put a person with the application. Um, the 25 things, it is truly a list, usually limited to two pages of 25 random things about you. And so a lot of times people will talk about their families um, experiences that have been childhood memories that have just really impacted their life. If you usually talk to uh, a student, a faculty member, uh, alum, or a member of the admissions team, we all have a 25 random fact about ourselves that we love to share. And it's always a great conversation starter. Um, so really a chance, again, to get to learn more about you. Um, you don't need to put in any certain order. Some people like to structure it in chronological order, some in grouping. So um, again, something to have fun with. And then usually your additional essay will be how you 
and to uh, be involved in the Fuqua community during your MBA experience as well. Uh, letters of recommendation, we do require one letter of recommendation. Uh, we use the GMAT common letter of recommendation. And we do ask that your one required letter of recommendation come from your current manager or supervisor. And then you can have an additional letter of recommendation if you wish to submit that as well. And then when it comes to the interview, we have two interview options. As mentioned, we have our open interview season, which is typically conducted from middle of September to October. This is where you can self-initiate your own interview. And you don't have to wait for the admissions committee to read your application and then decide whether to invite you or not. So with open interview, you have to start an application, which is simply putting in your name and email address. And then you can self-initiate your own interview and then apply in any subsequent round after your interview. And we also, after that, if you don't do the open interview season, we do interview by invitation. So that's where after you submit your application, we will make a decision as an admissions committee on whether to invite you for interview or not. And interview decision dates are listed in that chart uh, to the right hand side. So enough of me rambling. I wanted to provide you our contact information as well. So this is a great way to get in touch with the admissions committee, your admissions advisor. And so the email address is right there. Please feel free to email us at any time. And then be sure to check us out on our different social media channels as well. We're always posting content, exciting news, pictures from campus. So be sure to check those out as well, especially as you're working through the admissions process. But a great way to keep in contact with us. We love hearing from applicants and working with you. So please uh, reach out. That is not an empty offer. Please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but I'm going to end the presentation and Sherry is going to join me again. And we'll be able to take some of your questions as well and allow me to stop rambling. So I see Sherry has this again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Morgan, for the presentation. And welcome back, Sherry. Thanks a lot for answering the questions on uh, on the chat function. I saw those coming through at quite a speed. So thanks for keeping up with them as much as you could. Um, so I guess we'll kick off the Q&A part of this session. Um, so we'll be flipping between questions that were submitted on GMAT Club before the session, as well as those which have been submitted by YouTube. So to kick us off, um, the first question is, what are the networking opportunities or platforms available to MBA students at Fuqua? So I'll, I'll try and take that one to begin and Morgan can chime in. There are a ton of networking opportunities. And if I'm you know, understanding the question correctly in terms of connecting with their class, people connecting with their classmates, we have the traditional club system that's available, um, over 60 clubs that you can join either, you know, many students join multiple clubs, many students decide to take on leadership roles within the clubs, or you can just be members and attend events. So there's that form of networking. There's networking that takes place inside your section, right? So you're going to be one of 70 or so, 75 members in your section. There's networking that then takes place within your learning team. So you're going to be part of a four to five person learning team. There's connections that take place both within your class as well as between the first year class, which is your class, and the second year class, or the class above you. There's opportunities, they have coffee chats to connect second years with first years. There are opportunities for fellowships once you're in the program, and those fellowships tend to take place your second year, but a lot of them, uh, a lot of the fellowships are focused on supporting and helping first year students get acclimated. So that's another form of networking. There's networking, both formal and informal, that takes place as part of the career process as well. And within all of our centers, we have a number of centers on social enterprise and envir the environment, sustainability, entrepreneurship, um, you name it, we have a center for it. And there are opportunities, both conferences that are organized by students, as well as opportunities to network with uh, industry, faculty, other classmates as part of the offerings that those, center, that those centers provide. Yeah, brilliant. Sounds like there's, opportunities. <laughs> yeah, there's no short. There's no shortage. Uh, I mean, when you're not in class, you're networking. <laughs> and I'll add too to that, Sherry. I mean, on top of all those great experiences, too, we also have our alumni network and they're very involved and always willing to help our students. So every year we're adding alumni and every year they're coming back to help support. So uh, even post MBA, you're going to have that networking opportunities as well. Absolutely. Thanks. 
So I'm going to try and pick one from the YouTube chat. Um, let me try and find it. So here is one from uh, Buvana. Does a three-year full-time work internship, let me bring it up, as part of the CA course, uh, equivalent to the CPA, count for work experience? Yeah, I answered that one in the chat as well, but just for everyone's purposes, we really count full-time postgraduate, post-undergraduate education. Um, the work experience that you get after you graduate from a four-year institution, um, and it's full-time normally. You know, it's not that we won't consider any other additional types of work experience that you might have or internships. You know, you want to provide them so that we have a complete picture of your experience. But there can't necessarily be a substitute for having that full-time postgraduate experience as well. Um, I'll work the reverse side now just to make it a bit easier. Um, so another question that's come through is, can I apply to Duke without a TOEFL slash IEL, IELTS school? Morgan, you want to take that one? Yes. Yeah, so we do not require those. You don't need to worry about submitting those at all. It actually slows down the admissions process if you do. So we do not require those as part of our admissions process. Uh, another one that's come through from Sarah. Is there a test waiver option, GMAT, GRE, um, is an executive assessment available? And if so, what's the procedure to apply for the same? Yes, at this point in time, there is not. Um, you know, we're continuing to evaluate all of our options. We do uh, require, at this point in time, the either the GMAT, the, GR, or the GRE, or the EA, as you've um, identified there, Sarah. Um, but, you know, stay tuned. You never know. Um, but at this point, we are requiring one of those three uh, types of tests. Now, we come out every year with new application requirements, new application instructions, new changes to the application. So just be on the lookout in terms of whether or not there are any changes that will be applicable and, and then go from there. So I'm going to jump into the submitted questions. Um, so what I've got here is, how does Duke help students navigate a career change post the MBA? From the, from the perspective of training, internships, and networking? Sure. So there's a, there's a very formal process, and then there's an informal process. The very formal process starts actually before you even step foot on campus. You know, we have career uh, webinars and sessions, and you're able to meet with the different sector directors. So our career team is a team of 30 individuals. They are career sector, industry sector directors who specialize in different industries from consulting to financial services to technology, sustainability, nonprofit, you name it. There also is a huge team of individuals who are working with our corporations and, and industry partners and employers to make sure that we're developing the right relationships so that our students have full access. And so there are, there's a formal required curriculum, career curriculum that you'll go through. It starts you know, at the beginning before you start classes and then it picks back up after your initial summer institute and you know throughout your first year you're taking classes but you're also taking these career um, workshops and classes as well to supplement and to make sure that you're prepared because a lot of the you know the interviews and that whole process really starts in the fall when you, when you first start your first year so we make sure that you're well prepared both formally and then of course there's the informal ones the clubs and the partnerships that our career center has with each of the clubs so for instance if you're consulting the clubs are really active in making sure you're prepared for your case interviews. There's workshops. You know, we have a week in cities across all industries that our clubs really partner with our career center to put on. And so normally you would travel to different cities to visit the corporations. We were still able to do that last year virtually. So still connecting our, our students with corporations and employers through that week in cities, you know, focus on specific industries. I would say also the centers, the conferences are another great kind of repository and forum for folks to make relationships, develop and you know, establish relationships with alumni in various co companies and industries, as well as other industry uh, influencers and, lead and leaders as well, you know, in order to make connections and, and help assist uh, our students in getting access to great opportunities. Brilliant, thanks so much for that. Um, I apologize, I may have dropped out for a second. My internet connection seemed to be a bit unstable, so <laughs> do let me know if uh, if you didn't hear me. Um, 
So to jump to YouTube again, um, and please let me know if it's a question that you've answered and I, I can just find another one. Um, a question from Sapna. Is there any word limit for the recommendation letter? Morgan, you want to take that one? Yeah, I can jump in. So no, there's no word limit on the letters of recommendation. So again, we use the GMAT common letter of recommendation. So hopefully that makes it easier on your recommender or recommenders if they're submitting multiple letters of recommendation, but no word limit there. We just ask that they complete that form. And I do believe there is an additional um, question on there too, that if they want to add anything, they can, but no word limit there. You don't need to worry about that. Brilliant. Thanks, Morgan. Um, is there any criteria to apply for the gate or exchange programs? Those, no, there's, I mean, there's an, an application process. Once you become a student in your first year, the program team will make you aware of when you can apply for those particular programs. It might be, kind of, you know, a small application in terms of your level of interest, but nothing, you know, uh, too exhaustive. Um, and they happen in, in your first year, but then the exchange pro programs can also happen your second year. Um, and so, you know, there is a small application process, but just to make sure that you're serious, you're interested, you really know what you're getting into, but but not, you know, not any kind of extensive criteria that would prevent you because you've already gotten in, right? You've already gotten in, you're a student. We want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of all the different opportunities, experiential opportunities that are available to you. Great, thank you very much. Um, a question from the pre-submitted questions. Um, what are the advantages of being an early applicant to the Food Corps program? You know, I would say the advantages are you're, you know, if you apply early, that means you're prepared, you're ready, you know exactly that PEQA is the place for you. And if you get admitted, then our expectation is that that, that means because you've applied in our early action round, if you get admitted that you're saying to us, we're the one for you, you're the one for us, we're gonna, we're gonna make this um, happen. And so you're gonna commit at that point and not continue to look at other programs. You know, I don't think necessarily beyond that, you know, you know, you're, you, you're finished, you're set, you don't have to worry about kind of, you know, whether or not you're going to get into any other programs or just the angst that occurs with the application process. So I think that's a benefit for people who know exactly what they want and they're very prepared early on. I think just to, you know, get that over with, I think that's a benefit for folks. We still have the same, you still have the same opportunities in terms of a scholarship consideration, um, you know, we still, you know, kind of manage our admissions and selectivity across each of those rounds. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't think of it as like you're, you know, in a better position of getting admitted from early action versus any of the other rounds. It's really based on your preparedness and your ability to really speak to what's what's important to you. Um, and I think that the good news is that we make sure that there's scholarships available even in our early action round, because some people think that that's not the case. Um, but we do make scholarships available even in that early action round. So I'd say, you know, basically more so on, on when you're prepared and when you think you're ready to apply. And if you know that Fuqua is the school for you, should you get in? Because that's the other thing. Don't, you know, don't necessarily apply knowing that you still um, are going to want to consider other schools. I would say wait and apply to round one or round two. Thanks. <laughs> Um, a question from Janitha. Uh, oops, wrong question. Um, do you have business programs for a career in public or non-government or non-governmental organizations? We have our dual degree program with the Sanford School of Public Policy. So if that's what she's uh, referring to. So you could do a dual degree, get your MBA and MPP at the same time, or you could you know, just decide to do an MBA, but take courses at the Sanford School of Public Policy. So that's also available. You can take it's, um, 12 credits, up to four courses, 12 credits at any of the schools at Duke University. We also have a consortium of schools even outside of Duke University that you can take courses at. So there are ways to, if you're interested in policy, there are ways to supplement that either through a dual degree program or through specifically just the business um, MBA as well. Nice. Um, I think we've got time for a few more questions. 
Um, so I'll take one from the pre-submitted questions and another one from YouTube. So from the pre-submitted questions, uh, while most graduates from the US schools end up working in the US, how easy or hard is it for a Fuqua grad to seek employment outside of the US? So I, you know, I'm, I'm blanking. Don't 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 hold me to the stat, but I want to say it's somewhere between eight to ten percent um, end up outside of the U.S. I don't know, Morgan, if you have that specific stat on hand, but so it is possible, right? There are uh, students of ours who do end up going abroad, interested in doing internships. They get internships abroad. They have full uh, full time work that they get abroad. I would say, the, like you know, like this person says, the majority of our students are interested, even if they're not necessarily originally um, U.S. citizens, are interested in, in spending some amount of time in the U.S. And we have a wonderful track record of being able to support our students staying in the U.S. for a work authorization. Uh, we have an M-STEM program, so our uh, management, uh, science and technology management program for students. It's, a two, it's part of the two-year program. There's no extra cost. But if you wanted to take a select um, set of courses that would qualify you for that second degree, it's called the M-STEM uh, degree. You know, it's a part of the MBA degree. Then you would qualify for, you know, depending on if you got that, uh, if you said, you know, took those courses to satisfy that requirement, and if you got uh, employment in a kind of STEM designated type of field, um, then you could qualify for an additional two years of work authorization in the U.S. And a lot of our international students are interested in that. But but absolutely for students who are interested in going abroad, we have resources, alumni all over the world that really support our students in trying to provide employment if they're interested. I would add to that. <laughs> A lower number of people may be getting employment outside of the U.S. abroad doesn't mean that it's harder. And that's why we, you know, we just see a trend more of students wanting, and especially as Sherry mentioned with the NSTEM, with that three years of work authorization, if they're in a STEM designated job, more of them just choose to. So it's not that it's harder. I think the preference is more people prefer to work in the United States immediately post MBA. But we do see people that have worked here a year or three years, and then they move on to a company. Um, maybe overseas or in a global setting. Thank you both. Uh, I'll squeeze in one final question um, and I'll take it from Shivan because that's the one that's currently popped up on the screen. Um, what steps What steps do Fuqua take to help out international students with their placements post MBA uh, since the opportunities for international students are a bit less than they would be for domestic students? Yeah, so we have a so we have you know our career center. Like I said, is fully staffed. Not only do we have the different sector directors who our students are able to work with directly on the, in terms of their interests, but we also have an individual, David Soloway, who also specifically works with our international students, providing both additional um, resources and support from a networking perspective. We have a list of employers in the U.S. who sponsor students, so we you know make that available to our to our students, so they're not you know so you're more efficient with your with your search. Um, we also have a VP of international students, so that's a second year student, it's elected position as part of the MBA Association Cabinet, and that student also provides resources and is a representative on behalf of all international students. So there's a lot of uh, partnering that goes uh, on between administration and our student government to make sure that our international students are well equipped, well resourced. We have individuals and experts um, available to our career center um, that we make available to students who are experts on immigration law. Like I said, we have that MSTEM uh, degree or second major, I should say, it's a second major. And so that really helps uh, give our international students a competitive advantage uh, when they are being, when they're out recruiting um, so those are the, some of the things that we do, I would say, to really support our international students to make sure that they, you know, that they they have the resources, they have, they're prepared, they're well prepared. We have a um, business communication and culture class that, you know, some students are required to, to attend and other students are just encouraged to attend. And that really, again, helps to acclimate students to the work environment within the U.S., to the norms, to, you know, various best practices and in, in networking and, and telling your story, right? Um, developing your pitch, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Um, 
I think we've got 30 seconds left, technically. Um, so I want to take this moment to, to thank you guys so much. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Sherry, for, for joining us today on GMAT Club and giving us an insight into the FUPA program. Um, I know there's a lot of questions that we did not get to answer, guys. I'm super sorry for that. But if there's anything that you want answered, please feel free to contact both Morgan and Sherry, and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to answer the questions that you've got around the program. Um, another thing to note, again, um, please like and subscribe to GMAT Club so we can continue to offer you guys content that is super helpful for the MBA admissions process. Um, and I did see that uh, Yashika was posting that we are giving away lots of different uh, application fee waivers, obviously not with uh, Fuqua because I think by attending the session, you're already... Uh, qualify for one um, and there's also some GMAT club tests that you can win amongst other prizes so please follow the links that have been provided in the chat box um, and thank you so much for joining us for our last session of today um, our last presentation session of today um, yes and so Wonderful. have a great day again once again thank you Morgan and Sherry if there's any closing comments you want to add please feel able to do so Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Great questions. Be on the lookout. Our application will go live sometime the first week in July. We'll also be posting the new application deadlines as well, correct, Margaret Morgan? And so we're so excited about this upcoming season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and please reach out to us. Um, we love to stay in contact with applicants. So if you have any questions that we didn't get to during this session, please reach out. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the admissions advisor for the India region as well as Mid-Atlantic, but I have worked with a wonderful group of uh, teammates who work all around the world. So please let us know how we can help you. And we look forward to hopefully receiving your application and learning more about you. Thanks.